Hello everybody, hope that you can see this. Hello, if you could just write in the comments just to check that it's all working okay and that you can see everything um, nice and clearly. Um, ready for a Christmas themed um, Silver Swans ballet class today. I can't believe that this is my ninth uh, Silver Swans class in the virtual village hall. It's always wonderful to be asked back um, so regularly to take classes in the virtual village hall, which I think is just an absolutely amazing um, idea. Um, so for the just while waiting for everybody just to join, um, I'll just explain a little bit about Silver Swans and also what we're going to be doing in the class today. So Silver Swans is an initiative of the Royal Academy of Dance and they are ballet classes specifically designed for the over 55s. Very gentle ballet classes, um, there's no upper age limit um, and it really is open to anybody because the classes can be very easily adapted um, for a range of conditions and um, it's just such a fantastic um, it's so much more than just a dance class. We have this huge social side of things as well, uh, which is just absolutely wonderful to be a part of. So we tend to just, you're going to have a little sample of it today. Um, we It is real ballet what we're doing. We're doing our bar, we have our warm ups, then we do our bar work and our center work. And then a something that we do for Silver Swans is repertoire. So we're going to be learning some repertoire. Today, we're going to be doing a little bit more Nutcracker because of course it's Christmas themed. If any of you joined in my, session last month that was a complete nutcracker themed class today's nutcracker and christmas um so we've got a little bit of christmas music in there and then we'll just finish off there's a, the odd nutcracker tune there and then at the very end of a lesson we're actually going to learn probably one of the most iconic dances from the nutcracker we're going to learn the dance of the sugar plum fairy Okay, so um, I really hope that you're looking forward to this. It's such a lovely dance, and it just just it's just it's just Christmas in a dance. Um, before we begin, please just check around you that your space is clear of any obstacles. Make sure that your flooring suitable, um, and you will need something to use as a ballet bar. I have a dining room chair that's been decorated in tinsel for today, uh, specifically for for this class. Um, so just something sturdy that won't wobble over. But we're going to start off with our warm-ups to begin with. Um, so these are my warm-ups that I always do with my Silver Swans. So I teach Silver Swans in Bury in Lancashire, um, teach in, well, we did teach in-person classes when we were able to, and the minute we're online. Um, and these warm-ups, just really good, two warm-ups, easy to follow along with. The first warm-up just gets us moving, and the second warm-up is more specifically for our feet. Nice and easy just to follow along um, and we're just going to start by walking around in a circle. If you haven't got enough space to walk around in a circle, then you can just walk on the spot. Okay, let me just set my camera up a little bit more. There we go. Okay. So we're just going to start off by just walking around your room. Okay, walking round. about your breathing because if you've not got enough space to walk around your room then you can always walk on the spot. Okay so now we're going to take our hands slowly up and bringing them down and slowly up and bringing them down and up and down and up, everybody into the middle now, hands in front and we're just going to bend and stretch, and bend and stretch, and bend and stretch, bend and stretch, taking both hands behind you, and into the middle, and we'll take both hands behind you, and into the middle, now let's sway to the side, nice big bend and stretch. Doesn't matter which way you're going, just nice big bend and sway, it's really moving your arms. Bend and stretch, one more sway, feet together and we're just going to breathe in and breathe out. Okay, good. Right, so 
so now we're going to do our second warm up and as I mentioned before you're going to need a ballet bar for this so just something sturdy that won't wobble over um, I'm just going to move my ballet bar back a little bit more so that you can uh, see what my feet are going to be doing there we go right that's a little bit better so we're going to start off by facing our ballet bar um, I'll just talk a little bit about how to stand at our ballet bar so you don't want to be too close to your bar and you don't want to be too far away and the way how we work that out is from your elbows if your elbows are bent then that means we're too close if your elbows are straight then you're too far away you want to just have them in a nice relaxed curve your hands want to be as wide apart as your shoulders again that's just so we're keeping nice and open and relaxed across our shoulders you'll notice today that there's a lot of discussions around posture something that comes up a lot in silver swans classes and just ballet classes in general um, so we really want a nice open and relaxed feeling across our chest nice long neck as well so we can do that really by making sure straight away that our hands are in the correct place so that's our basic bar work stance which will take us all the way through the bar work today so for our second warm-up we're going to go to our demi point so demi meaning half because all the words are in French in ballet so you're learning ballet and French today um, demi point so it's half of a pointed foot so you're just lifting up your heel and then going to a point back to your demi point and down then with the other leg demi point to a point demi point and down same again to a point demi point and down same again to a point demi point and down then we're going to point and flex and as you're flexing your feet really thinking about pushing your heel down away from you it just gives that, that little bit extra stretch tonji and flexing and pointing and closing one more and flex and point and close okay so we'll just do the second one now just getting your feet moving a little bit more okay let's give it a go with music Sorry, it's very awkward. <laughs> to go into the ballet class um, so I just need to teach you the positions of the feet first of all these are th we're, there are five positions of the feet and we're going to need three of them for this plie exercise and those three positions will help you all throughout the class and we will come across those three positions as well in our repertoire for Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy at the end of the class so I'm just going to adjust my chair around a little bit more um, I'm going to face the camera just to explain about the positions of the feet. So if you just start with your feet together, toes together, and now if you keep your heels together and turn your toes away from each other, we've got feet in first position. So it's the whole of your leg that's rotated outward. Your turnout comes from your hips. So we're in first position there. We don't want to overturn out our feet. Your leg should look like a right angle. Or if you imagine you're on a clock face, you know, somewhere between. 10 to 2 or even 5 to 1 just somewhere where it's comfortable it shouldn't feel as though you're forcing your turnout so this is first position now if you put a space between your feet we've now got second position so the things about second position we have to watch out for is check that your feet are turned out exactly the same just be careful you haven't got one foot which is more turned out than the other and also we want to have our weight absolutely equal between do between both feet make sure you don't have one weight your weight on one leg more than the other so weight distributed evenly between both of your feet feet turn out the same they should look absolutely matching and that's second position so we've got first position second position now we're going to teach you 
third position. So if you pop your feet back to first, and if you bring one of your feet in front, it doesn't matter which one, so that your heel is going into the middle of your back foot, and that's third position. Okay, and we can have third position with either foot in front, so if you want to swap over your feet, so heel going into the middle of your foot. Okay, and that's third position. So we've got first, and we always point our foot whenever we go to a new position. Second position, pointing your foot, and then we're closing in front into third. And that's the basic pattern that we're going to take now for this plies exercise. Plie means to bend, it's just a nice gentle way of starting off the class. So facing your ballet bar now, I'll just turn my chair just a little bit more so that you can see me kind of sideways on a bit more there. Okay, so I'm facing my ballet bar, make sure you're not too far away just like we discussed about before. So feet in first position somewhere where it's nice and comfy and we're going to bend our knees because plie means to bend and stretch and what we're doing is we're making a nice diamond shape with our legs and we want to think about three points of contact staying with the floor all the time, your big toe, your little toe and your heel, just be careful of heels, heels always want to pop up off the floor, keeping your heels down and stretching the knees going over your middle toes. So we're going to take two demi plies in first, demi plie and stretch, another demi plie and stretch, now into a little rise. So just lifting the heels off the floor and down. Now that rise really is a dance and we will go all the way up to what we would describe as our demi point, but that does take quite a lot of strength and control in your ankles. If you do want to do that, then that's fine. And we want to think about, make sure that you're tracking down through your knee and your middle toe. We don't want to be going out towards our little toe because that overstretches all of your ankle. So nice straight lines and down. Or if you want to, you can just take it as a little test of your balance. We call that our quarter point. It's a very strengthening and stable position. So you can just take it as a little rise and down. And now we'll go to second position. So pointing your foot in second, two demi plies, one rise. Bending your knees and stretching, keeping a nice straight back, bending and stretching into that little rise, just a little lift of your heels, that's all it needs to be. Pointing your foot and closing it in front in third position, same in third, demi plie and stretch, demi plie and stretch, little rise and down. And then to finish off, we'll close our feet back into first position and we'll just take what we call a port de bras, port de bras carriage of the arms. So you're just going to take your right hand up, circle it round and down and put it back onto your ballet bar, taking your other hand up, circling it round. We're just getting our shoulders just a little bit more moving um, just before we start. We'll talk a little bit more about port de bras in depth uh, later on in the class. So we have our plies in first position, second position, third position, it's two plies and one rise. And then we go into our port de bras, just getting our arms moving. Okay, so feet in first position, check you're not too far away from your bar, thinking about your posture, growing up nice and tall, and we'll start our plies. <laughs> Demi plie and stretch. Plie and stretch. Now rising up and down. Now we'll go to second position. Two bends and one rise. Bending and stretching. Bending and stretching. A little rise. Lowering down. Now closing into third position. Bring your foot in front, plie, and stretch, and plie, and stretch, rising up, lowering down, now we'll close back into first, and it's time to move your arms, one hand, circling round, and put it onto the body of the hand, circling round, and putting it onto the bar. Okay, good. So that's your plies exercise done. Our next exercise that we always do at the ballet bar is our batman tondus. Sounds quite complicated, really straightforward. All it is is just pointing and closing. Nice and straightforward. 
We want to keep our legs nice and straight whenever we're taking a back montandu and we're sliding our foot to a point so it keeps in contact with the floor all the time. It's like it's growing into a pointed foot and then it melts back into first. So facing your ballet bar, we're going to play around with that back montandu a little bit today. So feet in first, pointing your foot to the front and then we're going to flex our foot and pointing our foot and closing. So we're just getting our feet moving just a little bit more today on this cold winter morning. Um, so pointing, flexing. As you point your foot again, really try and ripple through your feet and close. And then when we've done that once, we're going to then just do two normal back montandus. Point and the close and the point and close. Same with the other leg, pointing and flexing and pointing and a closing, then two normal points and point and a close. Now when we're taking a back montandu devant, devant being in front of you, we want to point our foot in front of our hip and our shoulder. Now when you're pointing your foot to the side, which is what we're going to do now, we're going to repeat it all going to the side, we think about our big toes being opposite each other. So it's not going too far in front and it's definitely not going too far to the back. So pointing and flexing and pointing and a closing, then two points and closes and a point and close other leg and point and flex and a point and close and a point and close and point and close. And every time we're returning our feet back to that nice comfortable first position that we established at the start of the lesson. So that montagne is devant where they're going to the front and then back on to use a la seconde, which is where they're going to the side. So feet in first position, just be careful if you have got a chair which has got a back on it when you're taking your back montagne, to use devant. Okay, feet in first, just thinking about your posture just for a moment. Okay, I'm begin. Okay, point in your foot, and a point, and flex, and a point, and close, two points and closes. So it's basically translated, it's rounding of the leg on the ground, going outwards. A lot more straightforward than what the title makes it sound. So facing your ballet bar, it's like we're playing dot to dot with the positions that we've just learned in our Batman Tondu. So taking your foot to the front, so we're sliding it to the front, in, growing it into a beautiful pointed foot, just as we did before. But this time, instead of closing it in and going to second, we're going to circle it and join it up to second position. We're going to keep circling it round to the back and then close it into first position. So if you had a pen in the tip of your big toe, you would have made a capital letter D shape on the floor. So taking your leg to the front, to the side, to the back, closing into first. So this is on the yaw because it's going outwards, closing into first, and then the other leg going to the front, to the side, to the back, closing into first, to the front, to the side, to the back, closing into first. And we want to make sure that your heel is coming in contact with the floor. Remember we were saying about the three points of contact. So when it relaxes through first position, do you make sure that, that heel relaxes down onto the floor. At the very end, when we've taken our two rondes jambes with one leg and two rondes jambes with the other leg, at the very end, we've just got a few little extra counts. So we're going to take, lift our hands up and we're going to take them into a nice rounded position. And that position is fifth position of your arm. So we're already introducing a little bit more of that four de bras again, all about your arms. So that rounded shape, it's an oval shape and your hands are about as wide apart as your face. 
and that's fifth position. Again, we've got five positions of the arms. Nice, relaxed shoulders, long neck. We don't have our shoulders up. Keep them nice and down and relaxed. They're a nice rounded shape. So this is the music from the Arabian dance for the Nutcracker. And we just have a little bit more time at the end just to take our hands up. So let's do our rond de jambes with a little pour de bras at the end. So feet in first position. Okay, taking your leg to the front, to the side, to the back, closing into first, really keeping your big toe in contact with the floor all the time. To the side, to the back, closing into first, all the leg, to the front, to the side, round to the back, closing into first, keeping your legs nice and straight to the front, to the side, to the back, closing into first. Now taking your hands all the way up to the fifth, shoulders down. Okay, so we've done our plies, well, we've done our warm-ups, we've done our plies, we've done our tondus, we've also taken our rond de jambes, and to finish off our bar work, we're now going to do a step called a grand battement. For this, we're going to actually turn sideways to our ballet bar, where we've always been facing it, so I'm just going to adjust my chair again, um, just so I've got a little bit leg. Well, there you go, that will do. Okay. So, let me just talk a little bit more about your posture when you're standing here, because it makes such a huge difference for your grand battements. We, if you pop yourself, if you're using a chair like me, um, if you pop yourself more towards the back edge of your chair, and then you can put your hand into the centre of your chair, this means that your arm is in front of you. That makes such a huge difference to your posture. If your hand's at the side of you, then it really starts to pinch into your shoulder, and definitely if it's behind you, then that's going to start to pull your shoulder around, which in turn will affect your balance. So you want to have your hand in front of you. Your other hand, we're just going to pop it onto your waist. And you want your elbow pointing to the side as well. Again, because if your hand's going around the back, then it's gonna to start to affect posture, which will affect your balance. So hands on your waist, other hand in front of you. And that will give you a really nice stable starting position. A grand batman is very similar to a batman tonju in that you're pointing your foot, but what we're going to do is we're going to lift our leg and pointing and closing. So we call that a divided grand batman. That's just a broken down version of it. So we're pointing, lifting, pointing and closing. And it's straight legs all the time. It's not about the height of your legs. It's just about a little balance and pointing and closing. Now, if I wanted to turn that into a real grand batman, there, are actually, there were four points there that I went through. I went through a pointed foot, a lift, a point on three and then closing in on four. What I'm going to do is I'm going to connect together those first two movements and I'm going to make it a swish, point, close. So the point and the close at the end stays exactly the same, it's the swish that now changes. So feet in first, we're going to use our outside leg. Your outside leg is the one furthest away from your ballet bar. That's the one we're going to use first. So we'll take a point and lift, and pointing and closing, and then a swish, and point and close. Then we'll go with the other leg. Point and a lift and a point and a close and a swish and a point and a close. Then with the other leg. Point and a lift and a point and a close and a swish and a point and a close. Because we've had our legs so pulled up, we'll take a demi plie and stretch. Another demi plie and stretch. Then we'll repeat it again, starting with your inside leg. Point and a lift and a point and a close and a swish and a point and a close. Outside leg, point and lift and point and close and a swish and a point and a close. Inside leg, point and lift and close and a swish and point and close. Demi plie and stretch. Demi plie and stretch. Okay, so keeping your legs nice and pulled up, keeping that hand in front of you, and just enjoy your grand batmans. Always a highlight of the ballet bar. Okay, feet in first position.
wish you like your clothes. Outside leg. Swish and point to the clothes. Now it's time for your jelly plies. Bending and stretching. Bending. Now let's go with our inside leg. Point and lift and point and close. Swish and point. Okay. So it will be great if you could comment on this video and just let me know how, uh, have you done ballet before? Have you done ballet before? Is this your very first session? Um, whereabouts you are as well in the, in the country or even in the world? Whereabouts are you joining in this Silver Swans lesson from this morning? Just add it in the comments underneath. If you've got any questions as well about Silver Swans or anything ballet related, by all means also put it in the comments and at the end of the session I'll go through and answer any questions you might have. Um, I'll comment on afterwards. So, um, like I said, just add in the comments, uh, whereabouts you're joining in from today, have you done ballet before, um, is this your very, very first ballet class as a silver swan, um, it would be great to hear from you. Okay, so we're going to now do a pour de bra. Now, pour de is carriage of and your bra is your arm, so this is the moment in the class where all, where dancers basically just really work on their arm shape, because we like to... Basically, the ballet class is like one giant warm-up for us. We start off with our bar work, where it's nice and gentle, we're doing our plies, we're holding on to our ballet bar for a little bit more support, um, and then we come into the centre, we work on our arms, we work on our legs and feet, and then it starts getting more and more intense, and then, and then uh, dancers then move on to the big showy-off stuff, and obviously then on to the dancing too. Um, and so it kind of, so we're working on each individual element and a pour de bras is our opportunity for us to really work on the shapes of our arms and the quality that we're putting into our dancing. And the arm positions that I'm going to do with the pour de bras today are some of them that appear now in our Sugar Plum Fairy repertoire that we're going to be doing um, very soon. So if you want to come back into the middle and um, I'll just put my, putting your feet into first position. So it's just staying on the spot and we're going to begin with our hands in a position called brava. So brava is a nice rounded shape, it's an oval shape with your arms. Elbows are pointing to the side and your hands are about as wide apart as your face. I'll just come up to the camera just a little bit closer so you can see my hands. There you go, so you can see it's quite a nice rounded shape. Um, elbows to the side. So that's brava. Then we go through five positions of the arm. So we have first position, so that's exactly the same shape. We're just lifting our hands up so that it's opposite your waist. And if you open your arms out to the side, that's second position. Now second position, again, my hands are keeping in front of me. In ballet, we never take our hands behind us in any of these positions, because as soon as your arms start to go back, that's your weight throwing back, and that's never going to end well. So keeping your weight forward, we talk about shortening our front and lengthening our back. Hands are curved and just a little bit more in front of you. Really, it makes such a huge difference to your balance. So brava, first position, opposite your waist. Second position, a little bit lower than your shoulders. Now, if you bring one of your hands back across in front of you to first, that's now third position. So think one arm in first, one arm in second, one or two makes three. So you've got your third position there. And we can have third position with either arm in front. Okay, now if you remember at the bar, we learned fifth position. I'll just move back because I'm a little bit too tall for this uh, <laughs> for the screen there. So our hands are in fifth position. 
So we've learned first, second, third and fifth. I'll just go through fourth now. It's one arm in second and one arm in fifth. And that's your fourth position. So third and fourth position are always made up of other positions. So we've got first position, second position, third position, fourth position, and fifth position. So there you go, well done. In about two minutes, you've just learned the five positions of the arms in ballet. Um, we're going to use all of these now. Um, so preparing your arms to second on the introduction. We're going to bring our arms across for three swaps of our arms. One, two, three. So we're going third to third. Now this arm that's in front is going to lift up to fourth and open out. Then your other hand is going to come across to first and lift up and out. Okay, so I'll just take that again. So I've prepared out to second. So I'm going one and uh, two and uh, three and one hand and out, the other hand and out. From here I'm going to lower my hands down to brava and then my arms are going to reverse up the side all the way up to a position that we call open fifth. It's like a V shape with your arms but your palm of your hands is facing down. Again, just like we had in fifth position, shoulders down but it's just turned and open so it's called open fifth. So we've just lowered our hands down. We can slowly take them up to open fifth. You can watch one hand and bring it down. And then we're going to quickly take it up to open fifth again, up and down, and then we'll start again. So we've got one hand, two hands, three hands, lifting the arm out, lifting the other arm and out, lowering your hands down and slowly taking them up and slowly lowering down and then quickly up and down and then the last time we'll just finish off with our hands in bravo. So it's just really just getting our arms moving for this. So we've got a piece from the Nutcracker. Could we actually just listen to this piece from the Nutcracker? This is from the Pas de Deux. Oh my goodness, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, if you have never seen the Nutcracker before, please, um, you know, look it up online. I think I did read that the Royal Valley are possibly going to be doing the streaming of it uh, this Christmas. Um, it is just one of the Christmas classics and it is just beautiful. And this is the part de Dirt, which is, oh my goodness, it's just like the highlight of the ballet. So um, we can just listen to it, please. So this will be when you prepare your arms out to second. So you can hear it's just nice and steady, very beautiful. Okay, it's the most gorgeous piece of music. So let's give it a go now. It's nice and slow, quarter bras are generally slow, and just to give us time, really, just to work on our musicality and the positions of our arms. So, hands in bra bar. Thank you. Preparing your arms out to second. One, two, and three. Now lifting your arm out. And the other hand. And lowering down to Brahma. Now slowly lifting your hands up. And down. Now you can watch the other hand as we go a little bit faster. And down. Now let's prepare out to second to go again. And one, two, three. Just lifting your hand up and out. And the other hand up and out. And lowering down. And taking your hands up to open fifth. And slowly down. Now a little bit quicker. And quicker up. And down. And we'll finish off. Okay. Good. Right, so now it's repertoire time. Moment everybody's been waiting for. Learning the dance of the sugar plum fairy. Um, could we listen to the music just in case you need a reminder? 
I'm sure you probably don't. It's one of the most iconic pieces of music. You hear it everywhere. But at Christmas, the music from the Nutcracker just haunts ballet dancers. It's everywhere. It's on TV, on adverts. It, we, when we go shopping, it's they're playing it over the tannoys. Um, it, it's everywhere. And the Sugar Plum Fairy is one of the most famous music from the Nutcracker. So if we can listen to it, please. So the instrument that you're hearing now is called the Celeste and it's almost like, looks like a piano and it became famous because of the dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy. The composer Tchaikovsky, he was the one who really made it very famous. Um, very unusual sound um, but perfect for the Sugar Plum Fairy. Um, of course the dancer is normally wearing a pink tutu um, and is in the land of sweets. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to start off. You're just going to if we start off over on the um on the left side of your room, um don't worry too much about um starting position because ideally we would imagine that we were off stage at this moment. So with your hands in demi second. So demi second is like your hands are resting on the edge of your tutu. Okay, so I'm just off at the side, so we'll just wait for four counts. One, two, three, four. Then we're going to walk on. This is your grand entrance onto the stage of the Royal Opera House. Um, and your hands are going to go through brava, through first, up to fifth, and lower back down. So that's your entrance. So we wait for our four counts. Two, three, four. Then we're walking on. And we're going to stop with our feet in first. Pointing your, sorry, let me just say one, two, three, four. Yeah, sorry, pointing now your right foot down to the corner. So as you point your right foot down to the corner, your other leg is just going to go onto a little bit of a bend. Now, as we do that, our hands are going to go to a low arabesque. Now, an arabesque is a new position for us. Um, you're, you've got one hand in front and one hand at the side. Quite a straight arm position, but as we take this, this leg out, we're going to gesture down to that foot, as if to say, look at my beautiful foot. One. Then we're going to stretch and bring this hand across as your arms change to third position, and then we're going to gesture back down to that foot again. Okay, so we've taken our walks on. One, two, three, four. Walking on, feet in first. And point, and across, and out. Closing your feet into first and your hands are going to change. We're going to close and turn to face the other lower left corner and as you do this hand is going to lift to a, a higher arabesque. This is our true first arabesque. So your hand is opposite the bridge of your nose. You've got one hand in front and one hand straight out to the side and that hand is going to lead you down to this corner and stopping with your feet in first. So I'll just go again. So I'm going point, across and out, closing your feet in and then changing your hand to in front as you walk down to this corner, feet in first. Now we're going to take our hands to demi bra. Demi bra is a little bit like you're holding a tray. Um, it really helps keep your weight forward and we're going to take two slow walks going backwards. Now the important thing to remember about when you're walking backwards is let your big toe lead the way, ripple through your feet. So starting off with your right foot first, it doesn't matter if you use the wrong leg at this moment, uh, it, it works out either way. So stepping back with your right foot, stepping back with your left foot, and then we'll, do you remember the gesture that we did where we were going down to our foot? But this time we're going to do it out to the corner, and then we'll come back into the centre again. Okay, so let's go right back from the beginning. So we've got our four counts, we're walking on, and then we're gesturing to our foot. Point, across, and point. Closing in, changing your arms, and going to the corner. Stepping back, right foot, stepping back, left foot, and gesturing your arms, 
and then coming back into the center. Then we start to repeat it all over again. Point across and point. Feet into first and change your arms to arabesque. But then we start to go down to this corner and it changes a little bit. So let's just have a go with music up to that moment there. Um, and then I'll explain. Okay, so feet in first position. We're off stage at the moment. Two, three, four, walking on. Point and out. Changing your arms, going down to the corner. Right foot, left foot, gesturing out to the corner and coming into the centre. Point, across, out. Arms to first, and then we change it slightly. Okay, so this time instead of going down to the corner and facing the corner, you're going to go around to the corner and you're going to basically do a full turn to face up to your back right corner. We're going to take three walks and a hold. Try and start with your right leg first. Doesn't matter again if you don't, um, but try and start with your right foot first. One, two, three, and hold. Two, like, and then you're going to almost repeat it again, but then it's going to change, okay? So one, two, and then turn to face the other corner. So we've basically just gone in a complete diagonal line there, um, all the way from where we've just finished in this lower corner, we've gone all the way back, and then we're turning back round to face this corner. So we're going point and across and out and first, down to your arabesque and then you go to the corner one and a two and three and hold one and a two then turning round to the corner now we're going to the middle section we're going to step forwards with your right leg stepping and as you do your hands are going to come up and they're going to cross as you plie and stretch now stepping to second position will take a sway and a sway. Now you've got that leg ready again to step forward. Stepping and plie and sway and sway and stepping and plie. And then, we'll, then we don't do our sways and we come down to the corner. So we've almost done it like two and a half times there. So stepping and plie and sway and sway. You can close into first or third position here. I think third gives you a little bit more stability. And sway and sway and stepping and closing. Okay, so from the beginning, we've got, we've walked up, we've gestured to our foot, we've changed to arabesque. We've gone down to the corner, we've walked back, down to the corner, come back into the centre, repeated it again. We've gone out, here's our foot. We go down to the corner, but then it changes and we do our walks going up to the opposite back corner. One, two, three, one, two, and turn to face the front. Then we go to this middle section, which is very dramatic. You can hear a huge change in the music at this point. Up, and plie, try and sway to the right. And to the left, it works out best if you step forward with your right foot first there. Step to the right, step to the left. And right foot, and down. And then coming down to this corner, and now we're going to take the little section that we did in our corps de bras. We're just going to take it straight from our corps de bras. So arms to third, to third, one hand, the other hand and then at this moment we're going to go round back into the middle with your feet in first basically exactly to whereabouts you started because basically the dance is going to start to repeat itself again okay um so we've done the first section the middle section and we've just reached up to the bit where it repeats again let's give it a go with music feet in first <laughs> Two, three, four, walking on. Right. 
right foot out across out first to our best going down to the corner right foot lead stepping backwards stepping backwards and going down to the middle again out across out first and going down to the corner now we're going to the other corner one two three one turning to right foot stepping forward right foot got lots of time there sway sway right foot one Going down to this corner, now it's into our corner roll. To the right, left, circle, circle. And we're coming back into the middle. So we now repeat the opening section again. Out and across and out. Arms first to arabesque and going to the corner. Step back with your right foot and left foot gesture down to the corner and coming into the middle Ooh, out across and out arms first to our best we turn to face the back corner we do our three walks one and a two and three and hold now at this moment moment depending on how much space you've got you can do the two extra walks or you can all what we're going to do is we're going to loop back round to come into the centre. So you can just start to walk round into the centre and we'll stop with our right foot in front in third. Just for a moment, bring your hands into bra bar and on the very last count, we push our hands out to demi second. And as we do that, we can have a nice flick of our head at the end. Bam, ba da ba ba bam, bam. And that's the end of the solo. That's the dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy. Could we just pick it up in the music please, just from... Um, where it comes back round again. So we've just done our pour de bras, pour de bras, one hand, the other hand, and then coming back into the centre. Just a little bit before that. So we're starting off with your right foot in front. This is where you pour the bras one hand, the other hand, and then coming into the centre, here we go, out, across and out, arms first, to our best, going down to the corner, right foot, one, let your big toe lead the way, and gesturing out, coming into the centre, out, across, look at my foot, and out and across going to the corner into your three walks one two three and now coming into the middle okay let's now go from the very beginning all the way through to the end hopefully you're feeling nice and Christmassy by now <laughs> okay I'm glad you've got your pink tutu on two, three, four, now this is your big entrance, feet in first and out, across and out, arms first, to our best, going down to the corner, right foot, right foot, and left foot, gesturing down to the corner, and coming into the middle, right foot, out, across, Arms first, to our best. Now we're going travelling up to the back corner. One, two, three. One, turning to the right foot. One. Lots of time here. Sway to the right, sway to the left. One. Sway to the right. Sway to the left, stepping, and coming down to this corner, get ready. 
ready for your quarter de bras? One, two, one hand. The other hand, let's go into the middle to repeat it all again. Out, across, out, arms first. To our best, going down to the corner, right foot lead, stepping back. Stepping back, gesture down to the corner, falling into the middle. Out, across, out, arms first, to our best. Walking up to that, one, two, three. Now coming into the centre. We're going to now finish off with our curtsy and cool down. So our cool down, just following along like we did with our warm up. Our curtsy, feet in first position, hands in demi second. Your foot can just go at the back onto the ball of your foot. I'll just turn around to face the back, then you can see. Foot on the ball of your foot and bending and stretching. If you don't like that, you don't feel very stable, you can always pop your feet into third position and just take a plie and then put your other foot at the back. And plead. If we've got any gentlemen joining in, you will take a bow. Okay, so feet together, just our cool down, and then we'll go into our curtsy. Are you really focusing on your breathing? Breathing in. And breathing out. Breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in. And breathing out. Feet into first position. And we can curtsy or bow. Curtsy or bow. Okay, just walking around your room now, thinking about your breathing. Breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. 